in the open country. They shall now bring them to the priest at the entrance of the tent and kill them as fellowship offerings. The priest shall throw the blood against the sides of the altar at the entrance of the tent and burn the fat to produce an odor that is pleasing to the Lord. The people of Israel must no longer be unfaithful to the Lord by killing their animals in the fields as sacrifices to the goat demons. The people of Israel must keep this regulation for all time to come. Any Israelites or any foreigners living in the community who offer a burnt offering or any other sacrifice as an offering to the Lord anywhere except at the entrance of the tent shall no longer be considered God's people. If any Israelites or any foreigners living in the community eat meat with blood still in it, the Lord will turn against them and no longer consider them his people. The life of every living thing is in the blood. And that is why the Lord has commanded that all blood be poured out on the altar to take away the people's sins. Blood, which is life, takes away sins. That is why the Lord has told the people of Israel that neither they nor any foreigner living among them shall eat any meat with blood still in it. If any Israelites or any foreigners living in the community catch an animal or a bird which is ritually clean, they must pour its blood out on the ground and cover it with dirt. The life of every living thing is in the blood, and that is why the Lord has told the people of Israel that they shall not eat any meat with blood still in it, and that anyone who does so will no longer be considered one of his people. Any people, Israelites or foreigners, who eat meat from an animal that has died a natural death or has been killed by wild animals must wash their clothes, take a bath, and wait until evening before they are ritually clean. If they do not, they must suffer the consequences. Chapter 18 Forbidden Sexual Practices the Lord told Moses to say to the people of Israel, I am the Lord your God. Do not follow the practices of the people of Egypt, where you once lived, or of the people in the land of Canaan, where I am now taking you. Obey my laws and do what I command. I am the Lord your God. Follow the practices and the laws that I give you. You will save your life by doing so. I am the Lord. The Lord gave the following regulations. Do not have sexual intercourse with any of your relatives. Do not disgrace your father by having intercourse with your mother. You must not disgrace your own mother. Do not disgrace your father by having intercourse with any of his other wives. Do not have intercourse with your sister or your stepsister, whether or not she was brought up in the same house with you. Do not have intercourse with your granddaughter. That would be a disgrace to you. Do not have intercourse with a half-sister. She, too, is your sister. Do not have intercourse with an aunt, whether she is your father's sister or your mother's sister. Do not have intercourse with your uncle's wife. She, too, is your aunt. Do not have intercourse with your daughter-in-law or with your brother's wife. Do not have intercourse with a daughter or granddaughter of a woman with whom you have had intercourse. They may be related to you, and that would be incest. Do not take your wife's sister as one of your wives, as long as your wife is living. Do not have intercourse with a woman during her monthly period, because she is richly unclean. Do not have intercourse with another man's wife. That would make you richly unclean. Do not hand over any of your children to be used in the worship of the god Moloch, because that would bring disgrace on the name of God, the Lord. No man is to have sexual relations with another man. God hates that. No man or woman is to have sexual relations with an animal. That perversion makes you ritually unclean. Do not make yourselves unclean by any of these acts, for that is how the pagans made themselves unclean. Those pagans who lived in the land before you and whom the Lord is driving out so that you can go in. Their actions made the land unclean, and so the Lord is punishing the land and making it reject the people who lived there. They did all these disgusting things and made the land unclean, but you must not do them, all of you, 
whether Israelites or foreigners living with you, must keep the Lord's laws and commands, and then the land will not reject you, as it rejected the pagans who lived there before you. You know that whoever does any of these disgusting things will no longer be considered one of God's people. And the Lord said, Obey the commands I give, and do not follow the practices of the people who lived in the land before you, and do not make yourselves unclean by doing any of these things. I am the Lord your God. Chapter 19 Laws of Holiness and Justice The Lord told Moses to say to the community of Israel, Be holy, because I, the Lord your God, am holy. Each of you must respect your mother and your father, and must keep the Sabbath, as I have commanded. I am the Lord your God. Do not abandon me and worship idols. Do not make gods of metal and worship them. I am the Lord your God. When you kill an animal for a fellowship offering, keep the regulations that I have given you, and I will accept the offering. The meat must be eaten on the day the animal is killed or on the next day. Any meat left on the third day must be burned, because it is ritually unclean. And if anyone eats it, I will not accept the offering. Any who eat it will be guilty of treating as ordinary what is dedicated to me, and they will no longer be considered my people. When you harvest your fields, do not cut the grain at the edges of the fields, and do not go back to cut the heads of grain that were left. Do not go back through your vineyard to gather the grapes that were missed, or to pick up the grapes that have fallen. Leave them for poor people and foreigners. I am the Lord your God. Do not steal or cheat or lie. Do not make a promise in my name if you do not intend to keep it. That brings disgrace in my name. I am the Lord your God. Do not rob or take advantage of anyone. Do not hold back the wages of someone you have hired, not even for one night. Do not curse the deaf or put something in front of the blind so as to make them stumble over it. Obey me. I am the Lord your God. Be honest and just when you make decisions in legal cases. Do not show favoritism to the poor or fear the rich. Do not spread lies about anyone. And when someone is on trial for his life, speak out if your testimony can help him. I am the Lord. Do not bear a grudge against others, but settle your differences with them so that you will not commit a sin because of them. Do not take revenge on others or continue to hate them, but love your neighbors as you love yourself. I am the Lord. Obey my commands. Do not cross-breed domestic animals. Do not plant two kinds of seed in the same field. Do not wear clothes made of two kinds of material. If a slave woman is the recognized concubine of a man, and she has not been paid for and freed, then if another man has sexual relations with her, they will be punished, but not put to death, since she is a slave. The man shall bring a ram to the entrance of the tent of my presence as his repayment offering, and with it the priest shall perform the ritual of purification to remove the man's sin, and God will forgive him. When you come into the land of Canaan and plant any kind of fruit tree, consider the fruit ritually unclean for the first three years. During that time you must not eat it. In the fourth year all the fruit shall be dedicated as an offering to show your gratitude to me, the Lord. But in the fifth year you may eat the fruit. If you do all this, your trees will bear more fruit. I am the Lord your God. Do not eat any meat with blood still in it. Do not practice any kind of magic. Do not cut the hair on the sides of your head, or trim your beard, or tattoo yourselves, or cut gashes in your body to mourn for the dead. I am the Lord. Do not disgrace your daughters by making them temple prostitutes. If you do, you will turn to other gods, and the land will be full of immorality. Keep the Sabbath and honor the place where I am worshipped. I am the Lord. Do not go for advice to people who consult the spirits of the dead. If you do, 
you will be richly unclean. I am the Lord your God. Show respect for old people and honor them. Reverently obey me. I am the Lord. Do not mistreat foreigners who are living in your land. Treat them as you would an Israelite, and love them as you love yourselves. Remember that you were once foreigners in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Do not cheat anyone by using false measures of length, weight, or quantity. Use honest scales, honest weights, and honest measures. I am the Lord your God, and I brought you out of Egypt. Obey all my laws and commands. I am the Lord. Chapter 20 Penalties for Disobedience The Lord told Moses to say to the people of Israel, Any of you or any foreigner living among you who gives any children to be used in the worship of the god Moloch shall be stoned to death by the whole community. If any of you give one of your children to Moloch and make my sacred tent unclean and disgrace my holy name, I will turn against you and will no longer consider you my people. But if the community ignores what you have done and does not put you to death, I myself will turn against you and your whole family and against all who join you in being unfaithful to me and worshiping Moloch. I will no longer consider any of you my people. If any of you go for advice to people who consult the spirits of the dead, I will turn against you and will no longer consider you one of my people. Keep yourselves holy, because I am the Lord your God. Obey my laws, because I am the Lord and I make you holy. The Lord gave the following regulations. Any of you that curse your father or mother shall be put to death. You are responsible for your own death. If a man commits adultery with the wife of an Israelite, both he and the woman shall be put to death. A man who has intercourse with one of his father's wives disgraces his father, and both he and the woman shall be put to death. They are responsible for their own death. If a man has intercourse with his daughter-in-law, they shall both be put to death. They have committed incest and are responsible for their own death. If a man has sexual relations with another man, they have done a disgusting thing, and both shall be put to death. They are responsible for their own death. If a man marries a woman and her mother, all three shall be burned to death because of the disgraceful thing they have done. Such a thing must not be permitted among you. If a man has sexual relations with an animal, he and the animal shall be put to death. If a woman tries to have sexual relations with an animal, she and the animal shall be put to death. They are responsible for their own death. If a man marries his sister or half-sister, they shall be publicly disgraced and driven out of the community. He has had intercourse with his sister and must suffer the consequences. If a man has intercourse with a woman during her monthly period, both of them are to be driven out of the community because they have broken the regulations about ritual uncleanness. If a man has intercourse with his aunt, both of them must suffer the consequences for incest. If a man has intercourse with his uncle's wife, he disgraces his uncle, and he and the woman will pay the penalty. Neither one will have children. If a man takes his brother's wife, they will die childless. He has done a ritually unclean thing and has disgraced his brother. The Lord said, Keep all my laws and commands, so that you will not be rejected by the land of Canaan, into which I am bringing you. Do not adopt the customs of the people who live there. I am driving out those pagans so that you can enter the land. They have disgusted me with all their evil practices. But I have promised you this rich and fertile land as your possession, and I will give it to you. I am the Lord your God, and I have set you apart from the other nations. So then, you must make a clear distinction between animals and birds that are ritually clean and those that are not. Do not eat unclean animals or birds. I have declared them unclean, and eating them would make you unclean. You shall be holy and belong only to me, because I am the Lord and I am holy. I have set you apart from the other nations, 
so that you would belong to me alone. Any man or woman who consults the spirits of the dead shall be stoned to death. Any of you that do this are responsible for your own death. Chapter 21. The Holiness of the Priests. The Lord commanded Moses to tell the Aaronite priests, No priest is to make himself richly unclean by taking part in the funeral ceremonies when a relative dies, unless it is his mother, father, son, daughter, brother, or unmarried sister living in his house. He shall not make himself unclean at the death of those related to him by marriage, no priest shall shave any part of his head or trim his beard or cut gashes on his body to show that he is in mourning. He must be holy and must not disgrace my name. He offers food offerings to me, and he must be holy. A priest shall not marry a woman who has been a prostitute or a woman who is not a virgin or who is divorced. He is holy. The people must consider the priest holy because he presents the food offerings to me. I am the Lord. I am holy, and I make my people holy. If a priest's daughter becomes a prostitute, she disgraces her father. She shall be burned to death. The high priest has had the anointing oil poured on his head and has been consecrated to wear the priestly garments, so he must not leave his hair uncombed or tear his clothes to show that he is in mourning. He has been dedicated to me and is not to make himself richly unclean, nor is he to defile my sacred tent by leaving it and entering a house where there is a dead person, even if it is his own father or mother. He shall marry a virgin, not a widow, or a divorced woman, or a woman who has been a prostitute. He shall marry only a virgin from his own clan. Otherwise his children, who ought to be holy, will be richly unclean. I am the Lord, and I have set him apart as the high priest. The Lord commanded Moses to tell Aaron, None of your descendants who has any physical defects may present the food offering to me. This applies for all time to come. No man with any physical defects may make the offering. No one who is blind, lame, disfigured, or deformed. No one with a crippled hand or foot. No one who is a hunchback or a dwarf. No one with any eye or skin disease, and no eunuch. No descendant of Aaron the priest who has any physical defects may present the food offering to me. Such a man may eat the food offered to me, both the holy food offering and the very holy food offering. But because he has a physical defect, he shall not come near the sacred curtain or approach the altar. He must not profane these holy things, because I am the Lord and I make them holy. This, then, is what Moses said to Aaron, the sons of Aaron, and to all the people of Israel. Chapter 22 The Holiness of the Offerings The Lord commanded Moses to tell Aaron and his sons, You must not bring disgrace on my holy name, so treat with respect the sacred offerings that the people of Israel dedicate to me. I am the Lord. If any of your descendants, while he is richly unclean, comes near the sacred offerings which the people of Israel have dedicated to me, he can never again serve at the altar. This applies for all time to come. I am the Lord. None of the descendants of Aaron, who has a dreaded skin disease or a discharge, may eat any of the sacred offerings until he is ritually clean. Any priest is unclean if he touches anything, which is unclean through contact with a corpse or if he has an emission of semen or if he has touched an unclean animal or person. Any priest who becomes unclean remains unclean until evening, and even then he may not eat any of the sacred offerings until he has taken a bath. After the sun sets, he is clean, and then he may eat the sacred offerings, which are his food. He shall not eat the meat of any animal that has died a natural death or has been killed by wild animals. It will make him unclean. I am the Lord. All priests shall observe the regulations that I have given. Otherwise, they will become guilty and die. 
because they have disobeyed the sacred regulations. I am the Lord, and I make them holy. Only a member of a priestly family may eat any of the sacred offerings. No one else may eat them. Not even someone staying with a priest or hired by him. But a priest's slaves, bought with his own money or born in his home, may eat the food the priest receives. A priest's daughter who marries someone who is not a priest may not eat any of the sacred offerings. But a widowed or divorced daughter who has no children and who has returned to live in her father's house as a dependent may eat the food her father receives as a priest. Only a member of a priestly family may eat any of it. If any people who are not members of a priestly family eat any of the sacred offerings without intending to, they must repay the priest its full value, plus an additional 20%. The priest shall not profane sacred offerings by letting any unauthorized people eat them. This would bring guilt and punishment on such people. I am the Lord, and I make the offerings holy. The Lord commanded Moses to give Aaron and his sons and all the people of Israel the following regulations. When any Israelite or any foreigner living in Israel presents a burnt offering, whether as fulfillment of a vow or as a free will offering, the animal must not have any defects. To be accepted, it must be a male without any defects. If you offer any animal that has any defects, the Lord will not accept it. When anyone presents a fellowship offering to the Lord, whether as fulfillment of a vow or as a free will offering, the animal must be without any defects if it is to be accepted. Do not offer to the Lord any animal that is blind or crippled or mutilated, or that has a running sore or a skin eruption or scabs. Do not offer any such animals on the altar as a food offering. As a free will offering, you may offer an animal that is stunted or not perfectly formed, but it is not acceptable in fulfillment of a vow. Do not offer to the Lord any animal whose testicles have been crushed, cut, bruised, or torn off. This is not permitted in your land. Do not offer as a food offering any animal obtained from a foreigner. Such animals are considered defective and are not acceptable. When a calf or a lamb or a kid is born, it must not be taken from its mother for seven days, but after that it is acceptable as a food offering. Do not sacrifice a cow and its calf, or a sheep and its lamb, or a goat and its kid on the same day. When you offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving to the Lord, follow the rules so that you will be accepted. Eat it the same day and leave none of it until the next morning. The Lord said, Obey my commands. I am the Lord. Do not bring disgrace on my holy name. All the people of Israel must acknowledge me to be holy. I am the Lord, and I make you holy. And I brought you out of Egypt to become your God. I am the Lord.